Hello everyone, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam. We are studying operating system, CPU schedule algorithm, priority based CPU schedule algorithm. Question from the GATE 2015 from the set 1. A question in itself, the most important to understand that how the language is given. I have not written it right here. If you just go online, get the paper, check the question and try to read it, try to write down the notes from it that what all is given what all is required and then try to solve the question it's a very beautiful question i'm going to read it out right here in front of you and why i'm taking this question separately in this video is because it has a touch of logic it has something which is like tweak in the algorithm or tweak in the question to make it little complicated so the question says Consider a uniprocessor system executing three tasks T1, T2, T3, each of which is composed of an infinite sequence of jobs. So T1 is a task which is not, which is itself inside containing multiple jobs, infinite jobs. Okay, you can just simply consider like we have a process which have got multiple threads to run, each of which is uh, composed of an infinite sequence of jobs which arrive periodically at intervals of 3, 7 and 20 milliseconds respectively. What does this line mean? It simply means if T1 comes at one moment of time, then after, like suppose T1 is coming at time 0, then after the 3 milliseconds or 3 burst time, it is going to come up again in your system. Okay, similarly if T2 is coming at time 0, then uh, it t2 comes again at time 7 so like if at time 0 one instance of t1 is occurring or the job 1 of t1 or you say one thread of the t1 is uh, producing in the system at the arrival time of 0 then periodically at time 3 again its next thread will come again at time 6 its next thread will come it will keep on coming because it's a containing the infinite number of jobs or the infinite number of threads next it says the priority of each task is the inverse of its period and the available tasks are scheduled in order of priority all right with the highest priority task scheduled first okay so it's simply saying that we are going to schedule with the help of priority each instance of t1 t2 and t3 requires an execution time of 1 2 and 4 so like if i have t1 if i have t2 if I have T3, so it needs 1, it needs 2 and it needs 4 milliseconds respectively. Given that all tasks initially arrive at the beginning of the first millisecond. So each and every task, the first thread of each and every task is arriving at the beginning of the first millisecond which simply means they all are arriving initially at the 0 milliseconds. Beginning of first millisecond means at the time 0. Now, right. So given that all tasks initially arrive at the beginning of the first millisecond and task preemptions are allowed. So it simply means that you have to make use of preemptive priority based algorithm. The first instance of T3 completes its execution at the end of millisecond. So this is actually a numerical answer type question. So we have to answer the completion time of T3's first instance. And the question says the priority is the inverse of its burst time. So which simply means 1 upon 1, 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 4. So this becomes 1, this is nothing more than 0.5 and this is nothing more than 0.25. Okay, so you can clearly see that this is the highest and this is the lowest so because the every instance is going to get come periodically for t1 at 3 t2 at 7 and t3 at 20 so now if i have to say t1 t2 t3 in the first round the second round becomes this becomes from 0 to 3 this becomes 7 and this becomes 20 likewise and it's going to be same the first time so this is 1 this is 2 and this is 4 and this is again going to be same so this is 0.5 this is 0.25 okay again we can write because it is an unending. So 3 plus 3, 6, 7 plus 7, 14, 20 plus 20, 40. Okay, same as this. So 1, 2, 4 and same as this. So 1.5, 0.25.
okay so you can assume this is your list of process which you actually have to schedule and you have to find out the completion time of the first instance of t3 so you have to find out the completion time for this ultimately so at time zero now everyone here on your cpu we are going to do the scheduling with the help of preemptive priority based scheduling scheduling algorithm here we have the chart with us so let's start scheduling at time zero at time zero we have three process out of which the highest process will go the highest priority will go so that means t1 will go here becomes t1 now t1 is the highest priority and it is preemptive still it is highest priority so it will finish completely so 0 to 1 is your t1 and this one actually gets finished okay now by the time one what else you have you have t2 and t3 you don't have these process so you schedule t2 t2 needs how much burst it needs two burst that is on the next priority list so from one plus two it becomes three it got finished it got finished it got finished okay now understand somebody might say ma'am t3 will come next no yes it is there in the system but again at time three we also have t1 okay and whose priority is higher than this so these two you can consider neglected but now on these priorities will be considered okay so by the time three we have t3 and t1 and priority t1 has higher one so it will get the chance so here comes t1 okay so t1 will schedule again from three to four three to four now by the time four we just have one process so this is finished 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 and finished so by the time four we just have t3 it gets a chance now you see everyone till what time it will get the chance till the time the next higher priority process comes okay so now next higher priority process is dot seven the next one is t1 at time six you have to look at this this arrival time okay before seven six is coming so that's more important so till four to six t3 will run first instance from four to six it can run so it becomes from four to two it becomes four to two but it's still not finished now by the time six because t1 is there so you have to schedule it because it is on the highest priority okay yeah it's on the highest priority so six plus seven and this one finished 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 oh sorry finished okay yeah now by the time seven now you say let's get the chance to t3 no i'm sorry by the time seven t2 is present who needs two burst whose priority is higher than this quite difficult for t3 to make its own place so we have t2 and its next instance who needs two burst okay oh, who needs so from seven plus two is nine this was uh, I think quite not visible at the end of it and we have to take more instances so what I did I have just summarized the number of instances it will be coming at the time respective time so t1 will have 0 3 6 9 12 these respective time the instance of t1 will come so this is finished this is finished this at 6 just now got finished right this is finished the 7 at t2 got yeah but it also got finished now this is partially done not completely done so now you see at the time 9 because we see from here at the time 9 this is still needs a chance but because now at the time 9 another process t1 is coming the third uh, the fourth instance of it so we have got one two and three instance already the fourth instance of t1 will come and it needs always one burst so 10 9 to 10 1 so this instance is also done now we have time 10 we don't have t2 right because 0 and 7 the next one is coming at 14 and we just have t3 which is still not finished from the first instance so now who gets the chance who gets the chance nothing but then at the time 10 it's t3 who gets the chance and my dear students how much burst was left only two burst so 10 to 12 two burst now at this time this gets finished and this is exactly what the question is trying to ask that the time when the first burst of t3 is finishing so the first instance of t3 is actually finishing at what time it is finishing at time 12 okay i mean this question i mean this this scheduling you can keep on doing because we have the infinite instance but why because if a gate exam question you, you are not supposed to do it keep on doing you are just supposed to understand the language of the question given right there and you have to understand that this is how 
they are going to come in the periodic manner t1 t2 t3 then again t1 t2 t3 then again t1 t2 t3 highest priority will keep on getting its chance will keep on executing its more and more instances but the lowest priority will strive will run for its first instance to get finished by the time the highest priority has already finished its four instances understand understand that how the priority which is static in nature makes a process which is having the low priority starve for its execution had it been dynamic priority that means with every instance or with every due course with every period if you were changing the priority of a process then t3's first instance would not have to wait for this longer time right or not so this makes the understanding of aging algorithm and this question clearly states that yes we are following the priority but we are making the other process starve for its chance to come so priority based algorithm also have a disadvantage or the shortcoming of starvation of a process which has the lower priority of its own right so answer of the question is 12 that means the first instance of task t3 is getting finished at the time 12 and i would like that you just solve this question again and likewise try to frame other questions i mean you look at the the way they have played with the language and they have made you understand many students i have seen got confused when it says that the, all the processes are arriving at the beginning of the first millisecond so they are saying that it will come at the time first millisecond no beginning of the first millisecond simply means at the time zero they are arriving and this periodic nature is very important to keep in mind so that you can see that how the high priority process coming and then preempting that's why question explicitly mentioned that the preemption is allowed because that preemption will only result into something like this correct so i hope this question a beautiful question was clear by every one of you if at all you have doubt discuss in the comment section and i will see you once again very soon with the next algorithm in the next video till then you bye bye and take care